Hello, this is Pixel Freak, and today I'm doing something a little bit different. Today I'm gonna take a look at Super NES 9X EX, SNES 9X EX Plus. So this is an emulator for the Super Nintendo on Android. It's in the Google Play Store now, and it's actually recently resurfaced, uh, at least in this new rendition of it. The original version, SNES 9X EX, was removed from the Google Play Store due to some sort of infringement claim of some sort, which emulators often see, and I'll get to that in a moment. Um, Cause I, I'm gonna talk about emulators in more of a broader sense, and this will actually probably be a lot longer of a video because I'm gonna talk about emulators in a broader sense. Um, Anyways, this game, this uh, application has come back to the Google Play Store now in this Plus version, which is made for more of the high-end devices. And as an emulator, uh, what this does is allows you to play Super Nintendo games on your Android device. So that kind of brings up the question, what's an emulator? Uh, an emulator is actually a piece of software that emulates a piece of hardware. So you could have an emulator of anything from a computer to a video game console to, well, anything. You could emulate anything that you wanted to emulate. Uh, they're commonly known, especially in the Android world um, and the iOS world, though iOS devices require that you be unlocked in order to use them. Um, they're commonly referred to, or they commonly refer to video game consoles. Very often, the old 18 and 16-bit consoles, and even more, even more recently, uh, we're seeing PSX emulators, PlayStation emulators on Android. Uh, I believe on iOS as well. And you're, there's even a, a PS2 emulator and a GameCube slash Wii emulator on the PC that runs relatively well. So that being said, uh, an emulator is not a game. And for that reason, the games are typically what is copyright infringement. Because a lot of times when you hear uh, emulation or emulators or when, you know, red flags, this is illegal, this is illegal. Well, the reason that emulation itself is not illegal, it's kind of frowned upon a little bit by a lot of the video game community. And, and the reason, at least the development community, and the reason for that is, is because it allows you, it enables you to do things that are um, illegal. And that's pirate ROMs. So a ROM is actually a software version of a video game. And the reason it's called a ROM is because in the cartridges of the first video games, well, the first widely spread video games, they had these ROM chips, read-only memory chips, and on those chips was the game, and it was read-only. You couldn't write anything to that particular piece of memory, and so when you dumped it, you dumped the ROM. So now, whenever people refer to uh, games that plug into emulators, it's a ROM. So you have an emulator and a ROM. So this emulator, the SNES 9X EX Plus, comes with no ROMs. It comes with no games. It only comes with the emulator. I personally have already picked up a few ROMs and they're widely available on the internet. Um, torrent sites, for instance, you can get large sums of them. Uh, I've, I've accumulated a number of them. ROMs, uh, owning a ROM is not necessarily illegal. Uh, how you obtain it is, and how you, if you share it, that that's where more of the illegal ground comes into play. And this really does depend on the country and the jurisdiction, legal jurisdiction for which you live. Um, for the most part, it's uncontested, but it seems as though it's legal to take your own games and dump the ROM and play it in an emulator that's widely available. That seems to be legal. It's kind of unchallenged. What isn't unchallenged is going and having a ROM and sharing it with everybody you know or everybody on the internet. By distributing ROMs, especially on the internet, you are pretty much willfully committing piracy, which most people have done at this point in their life just because of the whole digital revolution that's happened over the last 15 years or so. So, um, you know, big disclaimer here, if you run out and grab a bunch of ROMs and share them on your personal blog or your website or wherever you do, um, whatever <laughs> your, your uh, social media of, of choice, you can, they, you can get in some trouble for that. So don't do that. Um, going out and getting a bunch of ROMs, downloading them, may or may not put you in hot water. Uh, more than likely not. In fact, I don't think that there's ever been a case where somebody downloaded some ROMs and then had gotten in trouble for that. So you should feel relatively safe there, as I feel relatively safe there. Um, I can say that I've obtained my ROMs in a somewhat gray fashion, but we're not going to talk more about that. So let's go ahead and launch it, and I'll talk about some of the options. 
So this is the intro screen, and anybody that's relatively, you know, anybody that's watching this channel is probably tech-friendly enough to be able to navigate through this kind of um, rudimentary GUI. So um, load game is going to be where you want to start, and that's going to be uh, opening up a dialog that goes into your device and this is a uh, this is a look at all your different folders now you need to know where you put your roms so when you download roms and you tuck them away in your device make sure you have a clear understanding of where you've put them more than likely if you just went on your device and downloaded them from some website somewhere they went into the downloads folder if you download them on your pc and then you move them to your device make sure you know where you put them so you can find them in this screen i know mine are in removal in the micro SD card and then I have folders here for all the different emulators and I don't have ROMs in every single one of these folders but I do know that in the Super NES folder I have this large collection of ROMs so all you have to do then is pick which one you want so I'm gonna go ahead and run what should I run what should I run Bubsy let's run Bubsy so you can see here on the screen I have a bunch of controls. These are touch controls that are used. This is kind of the generic way to play the emulator. I can hit start here. I'm gonna play really awfully because I'm just kind of playing it side. You can see touching left and right, going left and right, and you got jump and stuff. So in the upper right hand corner, I tap the upper right hand corner and it brings me back to this menu here and I can close it with the X. And then it puts me back in here. So what I want to do now is kind of jump around and explain some of the options. Before we jump directly into the options menu, though, one of the things that we should look at is the save state. So in most emulators, if you're not familiar with emulators, um, come equipped with this save state feature. And this allows you to save the memory of, of where you're at exactly in a saved game file. It's kind of a, an enhanced feature. So right now, I can save my state of this Bubsy game. And then if I were to go back and go load state, really load state, yes, it puts me right back where I was. This allows you to save the game wherever, whenever, doing whatever. So it allows you to make perfect games on very hard difficulties if you'd like to. It is cheating, but there you go. It allows you to enhance your experience. <laughs> Let's put it that way. All right, so the next thing I want to cover is the options button. So I'm not going to cover everything in here because that would just take forever, and I don't have a full grasp on every single little option. But I'm going to cover kind of the highlights of it. So let's go ahead and start with video, and I'll explain some of the things there. So frame skip's a big one. If your device is kind of a lower-powered device, frame skip's something you're going to want to use. And what this does is normally when the emulator runs, it runs at about 60 frames per second. And it wants to run that because that's what the Android device likes to run at. You can skip some of those frames, and so you're dropping the rendered frames, and it makes it enhance how fast the game can render. So the game doesn't really slow down. Um, in the event that you skip too many frames, though, you will eventually make the game feel real choppy. So it kind of it kind of has it's choppy on one side where it's kind of. Uh, it slows down, the music slows down, and everything just kind of feels like it's running in slow motion, or it'll run at full speed, but it'll be kind of like a slideshow almost, so it's very difficult to play that way too. On this particular emulator, there's only one frame skip option, and that's auto. And I want to force it to include every single frame because I have a higher end device, so I'm going to go ahead and use zero. Orientation is another one. This will allow your device to flip upside down, backwards, left, right, all that good stuff. I like to keep it on auto because if I choose a different orientation in the middle of gameplay, uh, it'll it'll render that for me. Aspect ratio, you have three different options here. You have 4x3, 1 to 1, and full screen. 4x3 is a regular TV format. And the nice thing about that is, is that if you're using the on-screen controls, if you use 4x3 or even 1 to 1, the on screen controls are partially, if not fully, off in the black bars on the left hand and right hand side. Let me click 4x3. So you can see there in the background the game's being rendered. There's black bars on the left and right hand side. I like full screen because I like to use all of my pixels if I can possibly do that. And plus, I use a controller. I don't usually use the on screen controls. I connect my six axis controller to this via a, a root and an application that allows me to. Um, use a, a pretty sweet controller on my device. And I'm sure a lot of other people are using the six-axis six controller. It's the best way to do it, I think. Uh, image filter, 
it just cleans up the image. You can see there it's kind of pixely looking. Image filter goes put that back on. You might actually prefer the more pixely look. It's the more natural look. Um, but usually your TV, if you have a tube TV, it, I mean the picture quality is so poor that it kind of blends it all together anyways. And so having the image filter on there, I'm not sure which one's really more natural. But if you have no filter on there, that's being realistic about what the picture looks like. Um, the rest of these options, I don't really have an interest in, in explaining, so we'll jump over to audio. With audio, the only one that I really think that should be explained is sound in itself. And that's it's that's because it's, it's not just if the sound is on or off, it's if the emulator is even rendering the sound. So if your device is having a hard time rendering a game, one of the things you can do is turn the sound off, and then it, it just skips over all of the rendering of the sound, and it allows your device to use more of that CPU bandwidth for the video render. Um, sometimes it can be annoying to not have sound, but if the game is only playable by using that little extra bit of CPU power, then it's an option to turn that off. Input is probably the last big one. I'm not sure if there's anything in system. And really this boils down to uh, on-screen versus key config. So on screen, you can turn the controls uh, on or off or auto. Auto will sense for a controller and use the controls. The controls will be there if there's no controller or they won't be there if there's a controller. I wanted to go ahead. Let's just go ahead and well, let's leave them on. Let's leave them on. Usually mine are off. Uh, you can also adjust those on screen controls. You can see the blend amount is actually your opacity, how transparent they are. So I can say 10%. Am I wrong about that? I could be wrong about that. Yep, I was right about that. So now they're very, very transparent. You can hardly even see them. That's funny because it, it just doesn't show the blended amount until after you've actually been in there. So let's turn that back up. 65. Your button size, that does render there. So you can see they're much smaller now at 7.5 millimeters. I like them pretty big. 12 millimeters is probably good. For my particular device, I'm using a tablet here, a 10-inch tablet. And so you really need the bigger buttons or else you can't really control it. Um, dead zone kind of controls exactly where the dead zone is in the directional pad. Uh, you might want to toggle that if you're having a hard time, especially with games like Street Fighter, which I don't really recommend playing with a touchscreen anyways, because that would just be insanity. Um, and then there's a, a, a number of other controls here that I haven't really felt the need to move around too much. You can... A lot of games I know have the uh, kind of dynamic controls where you can move them on the fly if you'd like to and be very precise about how you move them. This particular emulator doesn't have that option. It does, you know, D-pad here. I can I can move it to different places in the screen. Um, but there's no, you can't just place it willy-nilly wherever you want to, unfortunately. And that's all I think really needs to be explained in the inputs. So system, I think there might have been something in here. Ah, yeah, the auto save state. So auto save state, this is an option that when you exit the game, it'll automatically create a save state for your game. This is kind of nice for Android devices, especially phones, because if you get a phone call and you exit the game quickly or something like that happens, it'll create a save state for you immediately so that you can go back and continue the game exactly where you left off. There's also the option for confirming the auto load state, and that'll kick in whenever you reload the emulator. It'll come back on and say, you know, you have a save state. Would you like to use that save state while you're starting the game back up. Um, aside for that, um, yeah, save path for the game. That's where the save, I, I like to keep it that way. Process priority just has to do with how uh, the Android operating system will rank this particular application in respect to the other applications. You should probably leave that on normal. Yeah, and gee, the GUI is nothing. So that's really it. I mean, that's all That's all there is to it. Once you get some ROMs and once you get the emulator, you can just boot it up and play to your heart's desire. Anyways, if you have any questions about how to run various emulators or certain settings, leave them in the comments section of this video and I'll come around at some point and I'll answer questions. So much nostalgia, right when I, you know, boot the game up, just the music gets me going. I've actually got a, a thing going on here in about a week, the Super Bowl party, and I got people coming over Saturday before we're going to have a big party at my place. And um, my brother's going to come over a little bit early, and we're actually going to play Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 4, Turtles in Time. And that is going to be awesome. I might even record it. Let's just sit in there geeking out. Um, so, yeah, look out for that. That might actually show up on the channel. Anyways, if you like this video, then like this video. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. And until next time, this has been Pixel Freak.